Wait for it. Wait for it. And we're live. Hey, all you crazy sci-fi and fantasy fans. Hello. It's time for your daily dose of shenanigans over here at the Blasters and Blades podcast. Just a couple of nerdy veterans and one chaos coordinator geeking out over our science fiction passions and fantastical fantasies. A place where magic is king, the sky is the limit, and space is the place. We are the podcast that puts the fun in dysfunction. So without further ado, we're going to let our guests introduce themselves. So we are introducing uh, to you the Reconnoiter, and I'm butchering it, so correct the pronunciation. Raconteur. Raconteur. I will probably butcher it another dozen times. You can correct me every time. Uh, Raconteur Press. Uh, and we've got the lovely Miss Cedar Sanderson, if you could introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers at home. Hi, I'm Cedar Sanderson. I am... I don't know if I have a title. I do all the pretty stuff on on the covers here at Wreck and Tour. Um, and I'm also an author and uh, other things on the side. Other things, right? Other things. It, it's too long. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's something that counts. Uh, Nick says art counts. And when I say no, he throws things at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had- is, a, is a man of the pictures. Yeah, we're ed- having education covers. Here. Yep. Is that what you got your degree in? Did you go to book covers at university? Is that what it was? My degree is in forensic science and investigation. Wow, you came out of left field. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we should not commit any murders when she's around. Nick, take notes. <laughs> I, that, that's, just, that's just a general rule. All, All right. right. Next, next we have... Ian McMurty, otherwise known as the infamous law dog. Ian McMurtry. There's no R in there. Just hands around <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm zero for zero tonight. Wow. You're okay. Um, Ian McMurtry, known as law dog. Uh, I published a couple of books. Um, retired law enforcement. I uh, spent some time in a salad suit back in the 80s. Um, and uh, Rita and I founded Back in Press. Nice. And then we have Rita. Do you want to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers at home? Sure. I'm Rita Beeman. I'm um, I'm a spare do whatever I need to be, whatever <laughs> they need me to do. Um, do Mostly under, bring us alcohol. Occasional editing and and um, um, brilliant titles. <laughs> oh, brilliant titles! Yeah, I did. I, Great shoes. Good shoes. I'm the yeah the shoe representative. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, I'm very good at like, derail- I'm derail- good at derailing a live stream when other people are doing it, and I can kind of, <laughs> I do I do the drive-by witticisms. Well, there's two two titles for that: chief of operations or chief of staff. She, she's chief operations operations officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we good send her out to people that we want to have write for us. So, and she finds. She finds bars for us to sucker authors into being guest editors. That's a whole different story. <laughs> really well, epic bars. <laughs> well, in fairness, uh, that was a that we was had, a co effort. It was just with you Jonah. know. So, so. so uh, uh, Wrangler of the Booze. That's a that's an impressive title as well. Yeah, yeah, that matters. So, and then right. there's me. <laughs> I'd say last but not least, we have Miss Jonah Bryant, not Jonah and the Whale. Jonah. 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 Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is what happens wow. when you stand too close to too many IEDs. Your hearing is just shot. It makes pronunciation yeah. difficult. I live yeah, with Courtney. I'm very sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nor, are you her mother. Nor am I her mother. Um, <laughs> no, I'm Jonah Hayden. Um, on my business card, it says, she who makes them wear pants, literally. <laughs> Um, because I, I seem to be the only person in this crew without ADD or a need to twitch with shit all the time. Um, and, um, Ow. I know, right? I'm a production. I'm the production manager for, for the press because um, mostly because everybody was running around in circles, tearing their hair out, and we re- resembled um, actors backstage. Um, for 30 years, I was a professional costume designer and worked in the theater. I find that actors and authors are very similar. Um, so in in their ability to lose their minds. So in their um, defense, not everybody's worth worth wearing pants for. Uh, you're completely right about that. You know what? I used <laughs> so, to wear pants all the time. I know so we don't have to. But no, but you not have, everybody is worth not wearing pants for. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
that so also I, tracks. Yeah, so that's my job here is that I I, I keep the schedule and I, I poke people and remind people to get things done. And I, I take things away from Ian when he's trying to take them apart. So okay. why he doesn't have anything that can be disassembled. So I, I chose the monkey, so this year. I, I, I will say that uh, Law Dog started when you were still on active as a law enforcement officer. Are you ever plan on change? Do you ever plan on changing that, or are you going to stick with it because it is such a cool moniker? Well, Rita and I discussed when after I retired, and a little prior to it, we discussed about me actually going to my name. However, um, it was pointed out that I had spent 25 years building a brand. A lot of dogs been a, a storyteller on the internet since news, yeah. news groups late 90s, 99 or so. Wow. And uh, plus, Larry Correa said, you do realize the L's would be at eye level on a bookshelf in a bookstore? And I went, oh. So in addition to that, you spent a number of years putting bad guys in places they didn't want to be. Yes. So keeping it more difficult for them to track you down is why. Yeah. I did. 20, 26 years. And yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a that's a good reason to do it, and it's just kind of the cool factor that's got to count for something too. Yeah, yeah, it definitely gets noticed. <laughs> so the uh, the next part of the introduction, dear listener, dear viewer at home, is how we first found them, and uh, I had be first became aware of their press through their open calls for anthologies because I love short stories. Uh, the timing has yet to work out, but uh, when we started doing small press interviews, I realized somehow we'd forgotten about you. So. When we had Courtney on for the uh, sidekick episode, I decided to make this happen. And luckily, she scheduled like a pro. Uh -huh. And then promptly skipped the meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, done, out of here, punk con. Done. So. All right. So in order to uh, to let you guys stay, though, we do have to do the infamous uh, religion question. Are you ladies and gentlemen ready for this? Yes. Yeah. I suppose. All right. We have Star Wars. Or excuse me, no. Starship Troopers. Dune or aliens? Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. Dune. Starship Troopers. <laughs> you are the odd one. <laughs> like that's a surprise. You know, yeah. like... I've never been odd. <laughs> However, I, I will add the caveat: Starship Troopers, the book. The there book. is there is oh, no yeah. movie. The book. There is no the movie. Book. So the whole you know, you know, book and movie thing. Yeah, no, there is no Starship Troopers movie. No, See, yeah, that one was pretty good. Yeah. So I am unaware. You know, so, so you'll get a kick out of this law dog. I we started publishing originally as the sci-fi shenanigans way back in 2016. <laughs> Season one, episode five of the sci-fi shenanigans. So again, 2016. I did a review with myself, Chris Winder, and Paulie e. Cooley, where we reviewed Heinlein's Starship Troopers. And I said infamously, I liked the movie better than the book. And I still get hate mail for that one five years later. Uh, the, the book to me was a fire passion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, the book was a, almost a political treatise. I didn't dislike it, but it wasn't what I expected from an adventure tale. Whereas the, the book or the movie was an action flick, which is what I expected from a name like Starship Troopers. <laughs> and see, I still get hate mail. <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, I have not seen the movie, and I'm probably not going to. But there is no movie. You can watch I've, it. But I've been told that the movie, which shall not be named, um, okay. bears no resemblance to the book. And if you approach it without the title, that it's... Yeah, okay, it's so just to give you an idea, I have... I, okay, I've been around science fiction for way too long. I have a story about Starship Troopers, the script. Uh, because I used to hang out with John Varley way back in the Dark Ages of Time. And they actually offered the script for Starship Troopers to him when he was work, working in Hollywood doing things. Now, mind you, he was a draft dodger and like was in Hate Ashbury and stuff and was completely against it. And they were like, he was like, just because I'm a science fiction author does not mean I should be writing the script for this book. Right. So he was like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this thing. So he attempted something and sent it back. Um, and obviously they didn't use that because it was even worse than what actually appeared oh, on no. the screen. Oh. <laughs> so, so yes, they were sending it to the wrong people to begin with with the scripts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just no. 
So I actually found Heinlein's books through that movie. And then I ended up reading oh, The yeah. Moon is a Harsh Mistress. And I read oh. the Space Cadet stuff and, and all of his other stuff. So, I mean, it's not a bad gateway drug. Yeah. Well, if he got you in the Heinlein, okay. Yeah, we'll forgive you. So. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good to know. All right. And because we are polytheistic here at the Blasters and Blades podcast, the legend, Kroll, or Conan the Barbarian? Conan the Barbarian. Conan the Barbarian. Hold on. Great close, Conan. All right. Love, so. love the lamentation. <laughs> I like the whole punch in the candle thing. Totally go for that. You're right on board with that. So, so have you guys uh, enjoyed it across all the mediums? Because it was a comic book. Obviously, it was the oh, yeah. uh, Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah. I think they did a remake of it as well. Yeah, Didn't watch it. Didn't it. watch it. I was, I was Jason was Momoa. Was it any good, Nick? Uh, it was all right. It was. It was a popcorn flick. I got my money's worth because there was a matinee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay uh, some segment of the audience. I was have watching you? the Schwarzenegger, and I had forgotten that there was a certain scene in it. And now, mind you, my son, who was about 15 at the time, walks into the living room where I'm watching this, and he's gotten to the scene with the witch in the cave. Oh. And my son's like, what are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the orgy scene was yet to come. I, I, we hadn't even got there, but my child was out. <laughs> it wasn't that he didn't want to watch it; he just didn't want to watch it with you. Right? <laughs> not, not yeah, we're going to spoil it for people who haven't seen it. And I don't know who those three people are, but there's Titties and Conan. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Nick, having seen both, what, how does the remake stack up to the original Schwarzenegger movie? Uh, it, it's just, you, you can't, you know, because you have Arnold and his giant muscles and he's Brian to crumb, <laughs> you know, how, how can anything ever excel the side of jail? James Earl Jones in Rick James mode. Are they the same person? <laughs> well, that's true. I forgot James Earl Jones was in that movie. I mean, yeah, he was, he was oh, well, I mean, so am was, I right? So was James Young. I mean, I want to make him that outfit, right? So, I mean, he, oh. needs, he needs that outfit. He does. So. That, he would rock that. Yeah, he would totally rock it. So. Well, it's it's not just it's not just Arnold. It's you know John Milius did the script. Yeah, and the direction, if I remember, it's it's Milius. Yeah. So nice. And All right. The gallons and gallons of alcohol infused blood that they that they <laughs> spilled. Yeah. Because they, they filmed in Norway. They filmed the the initial part in Norway, and the Hollywood blood they were using was freezing. So they cut it with Akavi. The stuntmen will walk around plaster. <laughs> All right. And because we, we aim to rectify the, the great uh, inequities of adulthood where no one asks you what your favorite dinosaur is, we're going to ask you, what is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur isn't the dinosaur. The Dimacrodon? Ooh, good choice. Because that's the only thing we have locally for this area. Yeah. Unless you're really into trilobites and cranioids, which I collected a nice little death death puddle of trilobites this last year. Yeah, well they yes, really cute little ones too. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. Pardon her while she slips into scientists. So <laughs> well, good. Yes, that's okay though. <laughs> What's your favorite? What about you, Rita? Brontosaurus. I mean Ooh. playgrounds and land of the lost. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> yep, I agree. I, I get it. So they wouldn't eat you. What about you? They could be a very good friend named Baby. Absolutely. What about you, Law Dog? Ankylosaurus. That is not one anyone else has ever said. Why'd you pick that one? It's a contrarian, I'll bet you. <laughs> Which I, I have a fondness for things that, that bunker down. Are covering spikes and have a great long whack bonk on the end of their tail. A whack bonk. <laughs> That's the scientific name, people. Look it up. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, so I'm just going to be one of the boring ones because I love Tyrannosauruses. I just love them. I love T Rexes mostly because when I was a little kid, I went to the New Haven um, Natural History Museum and they had a Tyrannosaurus giant skeleton. And I was like eight. And it was huge. And then I saw Alien. And I remember seeing Alien for the first time and thinking, I bet, I bet that that girl Tyrannosaurus could totally take this alien. You know, and I was <laughs> one of the 
that movie, and it just never happened. It I should mean, be. It should be. I mean, the short arms might be kind of an issue, but you know, the, it was like, all right, all right. So, no, you know, the aliens predated human civilization. I mean, right. So, you so, would think that there would be like yeah. a Tyrannosaurus versus alien movie. I mean, or, or, and get away from her, you bitch has a whole new meaning, right? <laughs> so, I mean, a whole different get away from your you bitch movie. I mean, it's like, so that would be great. Now I'm picturing a Predator versus Dinosaur movie, too. So, well, yeah, that or, or the, um, oh, the little guys, the little fast ones. Um, Velociraptors. Because oh. I had cats that were like Velociraptors, and chickens <laughs> pissed off Velociraptors, right? So the Velociraptor is what happens if you take a, a dachshund and give it really long legs. <laughs> okay. Wow. Roughing the listener. It's like, it's like, it's like not okay. Not All okay. right. That doesn't, anyway, so. And because we are civilized here, we are no longer knuckle-dragging troglodytes. Coffee your tea, and how do you take it? Uh, well, okay. Coffee, because most people know. Okay, so we have a sergeant major, former sergeant major working for us, who made the mistake of walking up to me as I was heading for coffee at the hotel. And I just turned and looked at him, and he was like, <laughs> let's go over there now it was like so um so I, i'll let you introduce that stuff so i'm totally a coffee girl and and i am dangerous before my first cup and how do you drink it um uh i like a little coffee with my cream and sugar outstanding me too it has, it has to be the right color you know i mean it, and it, you know i particularly like the flavored things but not the ones with nuts in it because it'll kill me but i mean it's just there's something about that first cup and the very first sip First cup is like, well, it's like suddenly, like scotch, all is right with the world. So, you know, the best part of waking up is Folgers. In the no, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we'll just it's bourbon the- with my coffee. That's that's the best part about waking up, right? So, I know you're not a coffee drinker, though. She probably should do this. So, um, so but we have our very own blanket court King, coffee, King Harv's Coffees. Actually, actually, sponsors made a blanket for blend for us and it, as a joke. But so many people asked for it when we announced and it on the live buy, stream. Still buy it. That they buy it now, and he sends us he sends us packages of it. He sends us pounds and pounds of coffee. So we will link we, to that in the show notes if you want to try their coffee. But we also are sponsored by a coffee company, Coffee Brand yeah. Coffee. Links in the show notes. Podcast grunts is the code to get ten percent off. Uh, if you want to try something different, you can try the uh, the Press Gang. Okay, we should okay. trade. We'll trade back and forth. There we go. All right. What about you, Law Dog? What do you drink if you don't drink coffee or tea? I don't. <laughs> I, don't I drink coffee by the gallon. Oh, oh I, okay. I drink tea in the evening, yeah. but coffee in the morning. The most I, mellow we've ever seen him on a live stream was when I fed him espresso right before the live stream. <laughs> See, that was pretty effective, I have to admit. It's more like a, 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 a an ADD drug for you, though. It yeah. It's more like his daily dose of medicine. He's a marvel. He can drink a big cup of coffee and just go right to sleep. Me yes. too. Yes. I feel yes. it. As far as how I take it, if it's okay, huh? <laughs> if it's the first pull off a silver bullet at four thirty in the morning in the field, I want it black. Uh, other than that, I've drunk so much midnight cop coffee that uh, anything other than that first pull burns my stomach. So it's got sweetener and uh, and half and half. And all right, so I have to ask, Nick, since you've both been Army and a cop, uh, how does cop coffee compare to Army coffee? Is it one and the same? Mm, no. <laughs> well, uh, no. <laughs> cop coffee is a lot different. Army okay, coffee is like, you know, when they're making um, Army coffee, it's like, oh, okay, that's good enough. Stick your MRE spoon in there and it'll stand up. <laughs> but uh, Army cop coffee... coffee Army coffee, they put a whole bunch of Folgers into this big tub of boiling water. Yes. For X amount of time. Then they pour water, cold water, and drag all the grounds down. Then they scoop the co- it's, it's cowboy coffee, basically. Scoop yeah. the coffee in a silver bullet. And I was always first one in line with my canteen cup. Um, cop coffee is whatever is cheap, run through the pour over by somebody who doesn't know how to make coffee. <laughs> okay. So both different flavors of suck. Well, it also oh, depends no. what side of the station you go to. If you go to where, where all the agents and we make our own coffee, you'll, you'll get some really strong stuff. And then you go over to like management and supervisors, their side of the house. 
and then there's a Keurig with all these flavored coffees. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. What about you, Rita? I mostly stay off the demon bean, but um, <laughs> I. That was my nickname in college. Demon bean? Are you serious? <laughs> no. I thought that no. was. I thought it was original. Um, I, I, I see that quite a bit when a unique name comes across or someone calls something that I've never heard be called that before. I'll be like, oh, that's my nickname in college. I like that. I like that. That's a good thing. I'm, I'm going to use that. Um, Feel free to I, feel I, I generally eschew drinking coffee. I, I don't like the flavor of it, but I love cream and I love sugar. I share that with Jonna. But um, but I my grandfather, when I was a kid, my grandpa would get the Brock's pick a mix. Remember those? Mm -hmm. There were, oh, yeah. there were all these bins of candy and you could have a scoop at the grocery store and, and scoop out whichever mix of candies. And you paid by the pound for them up at the thing. And grandpa got these coffee flavored candies. It was very sweet, creamy, sugary with a, a hint of coffee. So I, I want the suggestion of coffee, not actual coffee. <laughs> so my favorite is Folgers coffee crystals, the best cup, part of waking up as i pointed out they should we should hit them up for i'm sorry <laughs> I didn't, but but i like i like that sweet creamy flavor i like coffee ice cream but mostly coffee is one of those the, one of those big rip-offs in life that smells amazing and tastes terrible no offense sounds like my second husband so, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so ouch so okay. you know every once in a while i i will get hooked back in i'll go for years and years without drinking it i was driving back from the ozarks visiting family uh, a couple of months ago and i i was getting a breakfast biscuit and they had that iced coffee i thought Ooh, let's try that i haven't drunk coffee in years years and i got it and it was just like <laughs> sweet and creamy and there was a yeah it had been in the room with coffee once <laughs> and it was so that's it very low standards so coffee, I do like Earl Grey tea, mm -hmm. but I don't drink tea daily. And um, I'm enough of a spaz without the caffeine. <laughs> so when you drink your Earl Grey, do you have to like do pinky up and go Earl Grey hot in your best Picard accent? Which I totally didn't do. I butchered it. I tried. I do, but it's ever so smart and select. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and last. Oh, yeah. Pinky up, Nick. Last but not least, how do you take coffee or tea, and how do you take it? I generally start out my morning pressing the on button for the coffee because my dear husband sets it up, so all I have to do is hit the button. And um, I put cream in the first cup, and then I just keep refilling the same cup, but not adding more cream. And eventually, I'm basically drinking it black. <laughs> <laughs> so you have... Have you have low burn into the black right so um, there are actually a few coffees that i have found that are mellow enough yeah. to drink black from the start geisha um, mm -hmm. yeah geisha is good um oddly enough death wish coffee yeah which is ultra caffeinated it really it's super mellow mm -hmm. um, so i'm i'm always looking for a nice mellow blend i'm gonna try you guys as sponsor yeah um but I'm working my way through a big order from Jim Harps right now. Mm -hmm. My husband hates when I do flavored coffee. <laughs> so I just indulge in nice coffee. <laughs> I have a question for Nick. At your at your police station, do, does anyone drink the flavored creamers? And what about uh, the man on the management side, yeah. So I like the supervisors. Oh. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> yeah, that, that, the rest of us uh all of us on the line, we just, most of us drink it black, but um, I got one guy, because I'm on the boat unit, um, he, he loves his Starbucks. So as we're heading out to the to San Diego Bay to go get on the boat, he's like, oh, I got to stop here. I'm like, Ugh. it's like, dude, get your Starbucks before you come to work. <laughs> so we're not part, part of the rig right in front of there, scaring people off. <laughs> so he, he's in the border patrol, so there are sometimes people just run when they see oh, him. Boy. Oh yeah, especially. Yeah. He's like, dude, I'm off. Coffee. I'm not gonna bother you. Shut up. Come on, I just want my coffee. <laughs> I just want my coffee. That's all I want. Nobody will get hurt. So. All right, all right. So Mostly. now, uh, since we got that out of the way, uh, this is the part where we would normally throw in a sponsor, so we don't have to stop talking. And let me mark this, Nick. 
All right. Uh, now that I've marked the mark, uh, since they were gracious enough to come on and talk to us, they are sponsoring this episode. They just don't know it yet. So we're going to link to their uh, website where you can find all their awesome, like 27 bazillion anthologies. Uh, okay. It's 24 from 24. Uh, my goal is, you, I, I understand from Courtney, you guys are going for 30 anthologies in 2024. 20, Nine. <laughs> Twenty-nine. She's not thirty. So I, I, we you're coming in coming in broken. You said thirty again. <laughs> So we were originally doing 24 and 24, but as usual, we got a couple of really great ones with like a huge number of submissions that we couldn't say no to. So All Were Burn became three, and then Steampunk one became two, and then maybe three. And then James knocked it out of the park, and we're getting two giant freaking robots. And then I was like, no, that's 29. We're done. We're not doing any more. Just quit. Knock it off. So, so we're, when, we're, we're what I call next-gen publishing. Yeah. Um, if... Okay, our first one we 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 ever put an open call for Ghosts of Malta, and we got like sixty something. It was ridiculous. Sixty something stories, and they were good. It's like okay, well we'll do ten, and then we'll do another one, and then we'll do another one. So if we do an open call and we get more than the ten we usually go with, hell with it. We'll 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 fire up another book. Yeah, so we're halfway through twenty twenty five on scheduling right now. So. Oh God. Yes, I know, right? That you don't, that's it's my a job. good problem. <laughs> it's a good problem. So, an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. That's one of the things I've noticed because I used to do um, under Bayonet Books, I did my own anthology series, and I'm doing a, a run with uh, Three Ravens. And once oh, you. Yeah, he'll go. He, he can sucker you into doing anything. I don't know. I like, we were just talking, and before you know it, I'd said yes, and I didn't even realize it. And it was just, I don't know how that happened. He could sell ice to an Eskimo. He convinced me to fly from California just to mow his lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, wow. So, so he's, so, you'll I find in California. I, I'll jump at the chance to leave anytime. <laughs> you'll find once you start doing anthologies, everybody with the wild hair up their backside suddenly comes to you with all their great ideas. And sometimes you end up saying yes. And that's probably how you got to 29. Um, sort of. That's how I got on this show. Actually, no, actually what happened was he got drunk. <laughs> so, because, no you think i'm kidding i'm not so we did the first one it's like and we did the ghost of malta and then we had this thing called fool's con where he was sitting next to me and scott and we were all we were drinking a lot of we, really, we, were, we were we were taste testing bourbons yeah so, no that was scotch that time i'm sorry no, scotch. bourbons were the next a really nice scotch that was like can't fly on my mouth and nobody remembers the name of it. I know, right? So, <laughs> but we were sitting there and he was like, I've got the ghost malt done and everything. And and my friend Scott was like pouring me tastes of, of shots and, the, of the the and I would take cups. a little sip and he would go, and, and I would go like, <laughs> and I'd trade and I'd take a little cup away from him. And he just kept going. So three other of our friends were uh, had me telling stories. Yes. And Tom robbed me and to, uh, Tully, Tully and Wayne Wisnett. And we see, yep. Mm -hmm. So here I am telling stories, and I've got my little cup, and I drink from it. I'm telling another story. Look down. Oh, I didn't drink from my cup, and I was so drunk. He took his hands <laughs> off of it. I just kept putting the the full one in front of him. And, and then somebody <laughs> said, "So Space Cowboy Anthology." I said, "What? The, what the hell? Space Cowboys?" Well, actually, that would never really happen. Oh. Um, so because they told me we had, we had the live stream like after the event where everyone was sitting around going, "Did we really drink that much?" And and we were like. And everyone was like, wow, we're so excited about Space Cowboys. And you're like, what are you, what are you talking about? What, I, what Space Cowboys? I, and we're like, you totally agree. Even Fools Con, you sat right there and said you'd do it. And he was like, wait, what? And I, so off we went. So like two years later and 20 some odd books into this, I, we actually, he never said yes. I we do. just decided we wanted to do it and got him drunk. So he was, he I do remember at uh, Tolcon, at Tolcon, a couple of months later. <laughs> We're up at the room party. Oh my god! And somebody brought oil fire. Oh god! Which is a pecan. It's like a pecan pie, and it's 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 dangerous. It's it's very dangerous. And Kelly Grace and I were telling stories. Not to be missed. Somebody's were filling my glass. Not me this time. Not me. And I remember, <laughs> I remember <laughs> Kelly saying, "You know, Your Honor, I can explain." And I thought that'd be a great. That I was drunk enough to say that'd be a great anthology. But that wasn't the next one we did, though. No, 
No, no that's the next one I agreed to. We did the next Malta. So yeah. after that. Because we had something Malta. And it just started to snowball. It and snowballed so in a huge way. I have a pin <laughs> that goes on my on any um anytime in a con that says not responsible anthology they agreed, agreed to while drunk. Yeah. <laughs> The part, nice part of that is now everybody brings us really good hooch, oh, you know, and so we get really high quality liquor passed under his nose going, so if I give him this bottle, and we got like five different scotches at, at um, Liberty Con, and people are like, I have this great idea for anthology. I'm like, I'll, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Okay. She says it's great, <laughs> but we have a, uh, a shelf with various liquors on it. And of all of the all of the many bottles on that shelf, the only unopened one is the bottle of Everclear. So we will go. <laughs> the, the shelf is starting to sag, so we will load up a case of liquor. A we will go. Cooler liquor. We will go to a con. We will give away the liquor, and then we cut. And when we get back, there will be more in the car. It's the everlasting gobstopper of food. Yeah, we're good at it. So I need just, that problem. My my liquor cabinet is always empty. Speaking of hillbilly, last <laughs> time, we had gotten rid of half of our booze. And then he finds this little thing in the parking lot who had tried his mead and liked it and said, would you like to take some of that home? And she said, sure. I didn't know there was an embargo of bringing more stuff back to Texas. <laughs> Is he, what, you brought home like five or six bottles? We were mead running. We were mead running, yeah. So... So we have but, this giant shelf of alcohol, which is. But booze is not the only thing that results in anthology. No, okay. Yes, Sometimes it's spite results in anthology. Oh, oh, this this is our spite anthology. So. Oh, so I don't know. Do y'all know about MC Hogarth and James Workshop? No. MC Hogarth. MC Hogarth uh, published a short story called "Spots the Space Marines." Spots the Spot the Space Marines. And put it up on Amazon, happy as a clam at high tide, and then next day it's gone. And Games Workshop, that uh, does the 40K universe, had filed a DMCA with Amazon saying they had copyrighted Space Marines. And been doing this. So uh, she said, well, and got a hold of the electronic uh, EFF, electronic Freedom Frontier or something. Yeah. And they sued Games Workshop. And Games Workshop finally had to say, no, they don't own Space Marines. Yeah. She won. It cost a lot of money, but she won that lawsuit. So, well, when she did, everybody popped up with Space Marines anthology because it was now free and clear. And apparently, uh, Games Workshop had been doing it for a while. Well, everybody that popped one up never invited Maggie to publish with them, to submit a story. <laughs> The woman who made it possible. The founder of the feast didn't get invited to any, any of these anthologies. The one who invented the fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> so Courtney's telling me about this. It's like, uh, if she's got, tell her to send those stories to us, we'll publish them. So we spite. created <laughs> anthologies for, and we're up to three now? Yeah, the oh, third God. one just came out. So she's in the first two, um, and not the third one, but she's looking at the fourth. <laughs> So, so yeah, now it's in Space Marines in honor of Maggie Hogarth and her taking on the and big nasty bad and guys. And Spite. And Spite, because she should have been out there first. I mean, they mm -hmm. should have been inviting her and in. she is such a sweet part. Yeah, tiny little Cuban woman. So just fabulous. Really and, cool lady. And that's the kind of hairpins we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got that right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And Space Marines is actually, along with Space Cowboys, is one of our, kind of our flagship. Yep. Because Space Marines and Space Cowboys are the anthologies that go and go and go and Well, okay, go. yeah, and now we have... And we have, we have also, we occasionally do have people come to us with ideas, and we're like, yes, this is a great idea, we're going to do that. Uh -huh. um, and in the... And having done that, we have come up with an interesting underlying theme yeah. that you don't see very often in science fiction and fantasy which is more family-centered stories. Where the guys are not just buffoons, they're actually protectors yeah. who take care of their families. So Hang on, this cover this cover has gotten us some uh, accolades, so I want to make sure that this covers. So the comment that got me on this one, because that's why I designed that cover, is that you don't see a white male portrayed as being a nurturing, protective father very often. And... 
the first cover of that, because it's Casey Azell's idea, the first cover is basically Casey Azell as yeah. science fiction Madonna and yeah. Child. Yeah, she looks great. Um, but this, this was, I had shown her both, both covers in the beginning. She really wanted this one to happen um, because it is just such a nice cover with a guy sheltering his children. Yeah. And that's I, not something you get to see very often. I believe that, if I'm not mistaken, Casey's comment was, I think my over is just clean. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she did say that. So, so, yeah. so yeah, we we get ideas from some interesting places, and and, and with all the burn with fierce love, and now we're doing alien family values, uh -huh. which is stories of mismatched and odd families. We yeah. definitely have the, this theme going on with some of the side anthologies. Well, not only that, but some of the stories in All Will Burn because the the. <laughs> Gave up. He gave up. <laughs> He's the, been the, drinking the a lot. The whole thing was what parents would do for their children. My children will survive or all will burn, right? It got a little dark. Some of those stories got a little dark. So this one uh, came up with hey, can we do a story? As a palate cleanser. <laughs> we do Moggies in Space. Can we do Moggies in Space? Hence the giant cat behind us. Now, I have to give credit here of one of our technical editors, brilliant uh, Sarah Clitheroe. Um, I, I ran this story by her, and she said, you know, that would make a great anthology. So I, I have to share credit with her, and then I um, then I uh, approached the topic with with these fabulous people, and, and then suddenly I had a job. Yeah. <laughs> This is what happens. You don't stand still next to us. <laughs> I, I if forgot. you stand next, next to us, we're like, oh, oh, you're doing that now. Okay. So I, for, yeah. I forgot that rule that <laughs> working at a company, if you say somebody ought to do this, you then volunteer. suddenly that's your job. You you were just falling to do it. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. That's, so that's the, what happens. The yeah. moggies. And the question we always get answered, ask is, what is a moggy? Uh, well, my, uh, my background is uh, colonial Africa. So I was I was raised by various British type folks, and Moggy Scots, Scots, yeah, I'm Irish. Irish. Uh, a Moggy is a British slang for a cat of indeterminate ancestry, it which is, is every cat, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is the cat version of mutt. A Moggy is just a mutt with uh, retractable claws. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know. We'll but keep battering on in the shoe stop us and have a question. So <laughs> oddly enough, though, the second we uh, we were, we just published today, Mongies in Space Three of that galaxy fur fur away. And it's um that the anthologies have been warmly received. And as I said, I, I like the idea of them as a palate cleanser, as this this thing you go to and it's lighthearted and fun and fluffy and sure. silly. And again, but it's still, you know, it's still spacey and sciencey, and and uh, it's got a lot of exciting, a lot of different exciting flavors within, you know, within the covers of the book. But one of them, we, I did include a horror story, which I thought was amazingly written. Oh yeah, yeah. beautifully composed. But um, generally, it's going to be lighthearted and, and going to be something that you're not going to have. Well, not that, not that y'all have nightmares or anything like that, but it's not something that you're going to like go. Yeah, you know, it's not something that's going to be unsettling. I hope to read, although there are some some non-existent moggies are harmed in the making of the, the <laughs> anthologies. But, but generally, it's fun, and and um, I love a happy ending. I just said that out loud. <laughs> You did. I'm so you sorry. Did. I did it in public. I'm I sorry. know. The, uh, we'll forgive you later. Thank okay, you. When, when she, to, to give you an idea of. It tends to be, they tend towards our whimsical. We're known for being somewhat whimsical. Mm -hmm. And she she was reading a story about Newfoundland dogs <laughs> jumping out of aircraft with cats <laughs> in pods with machine guns. And the uh, dog is lifting his, his face. So Helmet, his lips yeah. yeah, so lip go. <laughs> I was like, and, that, is so the, us. that is the Cassesa story. It's not a spoiler because it's the the opening scene of the story. Yeah. It's like you're in, you're in, you're in. Come on in. It was so good, and it just, yeah. I was howling. I was like, whatever's in this, I hope it doesn't turn crappy because I'm putting this in. But the whole story, it's consistently excellent. It's outstanding. Yeah. 
And yeah. um, it's just, it's been a delight. It's been a delight. And I think, I think that whimsical, that sense of joy is, is a defining characteristic. And also, I mean, looking at things like all, all will burn the, the, this righteous indignation and there's nothing fiercer than a parent fighting for their child. So we've got the, we've got the intense seriousness that, um, that we look for in our greatest works of fiction. And while this is very lighthearted, I think we're doing something just amazing in, in, and speaks to the very best aspects of human nature as well. Mm -hmm. If I can just be lofty for a minute. Yes. <laughs> you know, but I, I think that, but I do think there's something for everyone. Well, that, yeah. I mean, part of the, the goal when we started all this was we were tired of, of nihilistic science fiction. We wanted to yeah. return to the, the wonderful feel of, of wonder and excitement and going out into the universe of, that the pulps of the you know, 30s, 40s, and 50s. I, I loathe Grimdark with mm -hmm. the fiery heat of a thousand suns. Grimdark is, is terrible. And yeah. when, I, when I was growing up in Africa, we didn't have TVs. And uh, I was over there as an old engineer, so we hung around with petroleum engineers all the time. And every one of them would have a collection of pocketbooks that they would bring to various wherever they were going. And the majority of those pocketbooks were Robert E. Howard, Edgar Rice Burroughs, mm -hmm. Talbot Mundy. I mean, just, I, I cut my teeth on pulps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Louis L'Amour, pulp, sorry, pulp. And I just, I don't like this, I, I, I honestly don't like stuff coming up, most of the stuff coming out now. Yeah. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase a rabbit here. Um, uh -oh. I don't know if, and this is something Johnny can speak to particularly, <laughs> okay. although I don't think I've ever discussed it with her. Um, during the, uh, during the, the real industrial, uh, the, the, the really emergence of the industrial um, revolution in England, I think 17th, uh, well, 18th century forward, the, um, the men's jacket was designed with a big pocket for a book. Mm -hmm. And the size of your pocket pulp book is, yep. is, is, is um, the pocket was made specifically for a book that size. It's for chapbook. This has been, yeah. been an ongoing thing. And I think that, um, and, and going, uh, the, the, the excitement for literature and the excitement, there's some point I'm driving at, I swear. But, um, <laughs> but She's this, getting there somewhere. She's getting this, there. This is, you mentioned that the, the pulp fiction, yeah. they're, they're that same size and everything. There's this continuum of literature that I think is absolutely brilliant and so important that, that we look at things that are appealing to people that are not just some industry thing, but that actually enliven the spirit and speak to things that are of our values. I mean, uh, and we, and I think we're a pretty varied bunch here at Raconteur. By the way, Raconteur is a storyteller. And that's why it was the, the perfect thing because that's the defining characteristic of this guy. And we're all, most of us are Southern or Southern, Southern oh. adjacent. And yes, um, yeah. we're, military <laughs> brat, I don't think Military brat, we don't qualify. <laughs> I just, well, we grew up everywhere, so. But there's a huge storytelling tradition among among a lot what yeah. we, what we grew up, especially the Scots, uh, the Scots, the Irish, and the British that Ian grew up around in Africa, because there were all these old RAF pilots who worked with his father in the in the petroleum industry, and they had stories, mm -hmm. and yep. he grew up hearing that. And I think sitting at their feet is is sort of what fueled his um, his ardor for for telling stories actually it's not even an ardor it's just who he is and what he does it's part of his dna and anyway i am so thrilled to be can i just say i love you guys <laughs> i love being part of this because it, it, it know, speaks so, yeah. to and it energizes and enlivens me i'll i'll yield the floor <laughs> we should have them talk now <clears throat> speaking of yielding the floor how did uh your press because Rack and tear. I probably butchered it again, but how did your press come to be? Closer. How did it come to be? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> our origin story is on our Substack, but you can tell it. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been writing stories about law enforcement on uh, the internet since 1998. Uh, the law dog files uh, were various gun boards, various other places. Uh, things would get too serious, I'd write a funny story about something that happened in law enforcement. Um, fast forward, and uh, Larry Correa called me into, well, a whole bunch of folks, this one in particular, called me into actually publishing it. And we went to, uh, we were briefly number one on Amazon 
in the broad humor category at number 82 in overall book sales. And it's like, you know, I might actually be able to live with this. <laughs> so I was talking to her and she said, you know, you, you got to have a press. You got to call it raconteur, you know, raconteur. You're a storyteller, so raconteur press. I was thinking troubadour, but raconteur. Um, so fast forward a bit. Yeah, several years later. Yeah, several years later. I, I moved to town. She moves to town. <laughs> this, this is important. Um, a friend of mine, uh, I was born in Malta. I'm very, very proud of my Maltese heritage. So a friend of mine said, hey, what would have happened if the uh, Germans had been smart and landed at Malta instead of Crete? It's like, really? Bing. So Facebook, so. there was like a several hundred Facebook <laughs> entry about me describing how bad of an idea that would be. <laughs> um, because Malta, the national sport of Malta for the last 5,000 years is let's fortify this bastard. Um, <laughs> Everyone's fought over, everyone has fought over that little island. So speckle out through this is people say, you need to, you need to write this book. It's like, I don't have time. I'm, I'm, well, I tell you what, I want to write a story in this. It's like, well, whatever. And I ended up um, with this little vignette of the ghosts of previous invaders sitting on a parapet watching the Germans fight through Valletta and little smart ass comments. And a whole bunch of people said, do the anthology. I will send you a story. It's like, uh huh. I, I've 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 dealt with this. I realize that if every ten people say they will send you a story, you might get two, maybe. So it's like, whatever. No way. Not going to happen. And it just keeps going. You need to do the anthology. I've got a story. I'm writing a story. So this one uh, says, all right, let's go to lunch. No, you said let's go to lunch. Oh, I, okay. We went we to got lunch. Got some other lives too, and we went to lunch. And she says, he, "Oh, mind you, he can wander around the shop, the blanket for this space right here. Going, I don't know, nobody read a story for this. We've been doing it for like a week and a half, and I was tired of it. So we go to lunch, and she says, put up a call. Put up a fresh fa Facebook post, a call for stories. Then shut off your phone. Let's eat the chicken fried steaks, and then look at it later. Yes. So, okay, whatever. You know, whatever. Nobody's going to answer that. Nobody's going to get Nobody's like, going to care. Just for lunch. Just for the hour of lunch. Just the hour of lunch. Ping, 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 39 requests later. In 45 minutes, I got 39 people say, hell yeah, I'm writing a story now. Because what do we know, right? So, so. I go home. It's like <laughs> I'm slightly gobsmacked. And Rita says, whatever you do, publish under Raconteur Press. Mm -hmm. So we publish under Raconteur Press. Well, and then you said... I don't know how to edit an anthology. And oh, I, yeah. I kind of know this woman. She said, I said, I have no idea I, how to edit an anthology. Like, even, I, even, even if they send me the stories, I, I don't like, know. No, no, no. See, because it's because Courtney. Now, and she, she said, could do that. my roommate, oh, this is the funny part. My roommate <laughs> does that sort of thing. I say, oh, okay. So, Courtney, I've, I've known Courtney. So, yeah. Courtney is putting together. And then we get the cover. And the cover doesn't say Courtney. And I went, do you, about, do you allow cussing? Because I went, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> we do right. know. She didn't know her. The, the, she, it was under her. Um, it was under he a pen name. So, I didn't know that. Well, all these things we've learned, right? Yes. So, but yeah. So, and then we we had a party at Tolkien and released the book, and it's kind of all history from there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been, well, not only that, but people kept turning in. People kept turning in Malta stories. Yeah. And they were good Malta. They yeah. were good stories. It was I fun. Mean, we wound up like eighty of them. Yeah, and we ended up with well, we have four books. So and I, I, I said, okay, we'll do. All right, we'll do. We'll all right, we'll do a book. Okay, let's do another one. So and then it's like you know, I'm, I'm trying to find the ones to put in the ten. Yeah, and it's like I, I can't, I can't pick ten. Mm -hmm. And this one goes, well, then do a second story. It's like and, we, second and just book. kept it's going, like, and it okay. kept going and kept going and going and. And then the roller coaster took off, and we were like, "Ah!" <laughs> it's like, and, and then the LLC happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and now you're a real boy. And now he's a real boy. <gasps> we're really, he's a real boy now. We we got an investor and everything. So yeah, we're just like, let's go. Let's just crap. do it. So suddenly, now I'm a bookkeeper. What the hell? How yeah. did that happen? Right. So, so yeah. And so that's what happened. We had like 18 months of utter, complete craziness. And then became real. It and, hasn't and, stopped and, yet. Well, no, it has not. And then, so, and about three months in, I, I Courtney was winding around her office uh, at home, just like three in the morning. She was so blown out. I'm like, what? What's going on? She says, I can't. I don't. 
I speak. So we actually sat down and went through all the different book projects she was involved in, which was over 40, four zero. I went, not, the, the, just, not uh, just her, but everything that's going on, but because yeah. of how many authors live here. Um, and so I came in the next morning and I said, I just hired myself as your production editor. And he went, okay. Yeah, so, production manager. I said, good. Um, so, and here we are. And then, you know, Rita was already on board. And mm -hmm. then. Uh, Cedar and walks in. The, the Cedar walks the next day <laughs> and it says, the "Look shop. at this! Look at what I'm doing, Mid Journey." I went, "We need a cover for it." <laughs> and Cedar went, "What? Wait, Brett, how?" It's, it, she walked in and stood still next to us, and here we are. So, 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 yeah. I mean, like, it's been interesting. So, yeah. I mean, like I said, we'll just blather on if you just let us. Yeah. So. If you don't, if you don't cut us off, we'll keep talking. <laughs> if you have a question for them. And don't like calling attention to ourselves. <laughs> and uh, I swear like a New Haven fishwife, so sorry. Yeah, edit, and post, edit and post. Well, theater for 30 years. We ain't going to do that shit. We ain't edited nothing. <laughs> So, so for the record, we have edited exactly two episodes. One because the audio on the other side was so bad, I, but the author was so cool, we wanted to get it out there. So I paid an editor for David Ashura. Davis Ashura, um, <laughs> his, his interview was good. And then we edited once because we made it. We were pre-recording for a guy that was a contractor overseas. That's what he told us. And so we recorded it in the summer. And I made the joke that he was uh, scaling Mons Olympus, which is a mountain on Mars, if people don't catch it when I make that joke, for the CIA. And then a week later, before we were going to put it live, he said, my bosses don't like that you mentioned them in your joke. Please take it out. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, sir. So that was the only, the second episode we've ever edited because we're too lazy well, for that. Well, outed him that you did that. <laughs> so that's because the alphabet agencies, while they love climbing Monses. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, like, about. I mean, we have Agent Frank, oh, but shoot. his liver. You're going to have to edit that out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we didn't mention names, so we're good this time, I think. Well, yeah, it's like Agent Frank who watches the live stream. Oh, God. He has a Chuck liver light that's on all the time because we just torture the poor boy. We, uh, so. we, we joke that we have an NSA agent assigned to our live stream because we go out, we go, we talk about stuff we probably shouldn't talk about. Yeah, I'm surprised you two didn't throw you off. Yeah, so. no kidding. Yeah. Uh, Facebook actually threw our live stream off. <laughs> they did. Uh, yes, they did. They did. And we joked that he cries in the shower after the episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the live stream goes, yeah, there are no rails. We left the rails behind a long time ago. And the chat starts a whole long time before we even open It's It's nuts. And the then the same thing. Yeah, and Three Moms is doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. The chat well, just wanders off on its own. So, but isn't that more fun? It Don't is you more find fun. The, the spontaneity to be <laughs> why you're in the wine and invigorating. <laughs> Sorry, yep, that's, that's just how we wind up with squoozies. <laughs> squoozies, yes. Mm. Sorry, do you have other questions? Because <laughs> we're just going to keep going. <laughs> so, do you have any? So, you obviously you do anthologies. You also yep. are working with some authors on full proper novels. Are there any no. like no? Yeah, we, no, no, not not for this not year. Not this year. We would like to do novels, but there is absolutely no way. Sorry, that's that's my job. Have you noticed I'm the one who says no all the time? It's because okay. they, you guys all like get all like, well, let's do this. And I'm like, no. Yeah. Um, we want to do novels. Yeah, we Novel, really want novels to are where the money is. So yeah. we need to break into novels sometime along here. Yes. It's just that 2024 and probably. Well, we, we want to start we, exploring it in 2025. We so. are. We are. We're stress testing our TTPs right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, the, we're launching an anthology every two weeks, and we're yeah. doing it fast, and we're doing it quick, so we can see where things break down. And then we yeah. go back and fix it. Yeah. And it's, then do it fast and quick. Yeah. Can I say this? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, part of it is that we want to make sure that we can do this exactly right first. Yeah. Um, and serve the people who are doing our anthologies first before we add something in that might make us train wreck on our schedule for 2024 because while we're whimsical and silly, we are dead serious about the business side of this. Right. We are dead serious that our authors get everything they get need paid. to have a good story, to get paid, to have a fair and reasonable contract and, and to have us completely focus on their books that are coming out. And we've set a schedule that we allowed to expand to 29, um, that we made, we made the promise to do that. So, adding in, I mean, we may start talking about novels and because and in July we have our next year meeting because we really like to do that, but we have to make sure that we can step up to the plate for whoever comes to us with a novel. That's absolutely true. Right. It's a, 
completely or different order of magnitude yeah. from editing a collection of short stories because with a short story, ideas like continuity, all of the all of these elements mm -hmm. that are the components that uh, that go into a short story in a in, it's much easier for a short story than a long format story mm -hmm. where, uh, where it's much more exhaustive. Yeah, we have and to be able to give our editors the space to devote the time to the proper editing of the novels. And right now we can't do that. There's just no way. Right. So we're trying to develop newer um, guest editors and we're trying to bring in more copy editors, which we just have two more, um, because we're finding out, okay, then we really do need this. So we're being, we're practicing as one, as Mike says, Sergeant Major on our team says we are practicing tactical patience. Again, um, we're, we're stressing, we're stress testing our TTPs. This yeah. is how we do it. Let's run yeah. as hard and fast as we can. Ooh, we had a failure. Okay, and so we did. Uh, we yeah. found, we found one. We yeah. fixed it. Now mm -hmm. we're going to keep going until yeah. we find the next one. Yeah, because um, slow measured growth is so much better than taking on way too much too soon and train wrecking. And we don't want to train wreck. We start, so. started doing the Elon Musk Starship. <laughs> We push it till it explodes, fix it, and then yeah. one, once the year's done. No, we, before it explodes, we fix it. We're, and that's no, what that Elon was paces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elon paces in the shop, back and forth. I, I have a bit of ADD. That is okay. Nick lives with it. He's got Stabby, who's um, his ADD monkey that he has to kind of corral or she stabs him. <laughs> Do you yeah, you have is this is this a toy monkey or an actual monkey? He's a fourteen year old boy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and, and Stabby is his wife. So I was hoping you persona, like your Just, your alter ego. Yeah, yeah. No, monkeys are Satan's oven mitts. They are evil. <laughs> if the only difference between monkeys and Nazis is that monkeys wouldn't have felt a bad putting people into cattle cars. Monkeys are evil. So you were Team Godzilla, not Team uh, King Kong. Like, Godzilla all the way. <laughs> My man. He, he doesn't, he doesn't like I hate monkeys. I, I loathe monkeys. He routinely beats up monkey puppets on, on the live stream. So good, people good send them. So, so monkey, yeah. monkeys are not us. So obviously we, we try to keep the podcast limited. And uh, obviously we have no problem getting content from you guys. But... <laughs> if, uh, if people wanted to know, most of our audience are listeners. So first off, how can people buy your anthologies? And then for those that are authors that are listening, how can they find your open calls? Okay. Right now we're working on a uh, web page. We have a sub stack. That's uh, where it is. Go there. You go. At the banner across the top, there's open calls. We are very firm. We list the name, what it's about. Uh, we list when it opens when it closes, when the contracts go out, and when it publishes. And we, we stick to that fairly uh, Yeah, it only, fairly sometimes we're off by a day because we can't decide between the 60 stories, which tends. But uh, we're, we're pretty hard on our deadlines because we don't like people to send in a story and wait three years to find out if something mm -hmm. happened because God knows that's never happened in publishing ever for 40 some odd years. So if, if you'll so, go to the Substack. Substack. Um, yeah, open calls are there. Yeah, Contour Press Substack is there. Um, so. I will also say that... Um, we pay, uh, everybody gets an equal share. Mm -hmm. um, if you send us a short story, we will hang on to the rights for a year. If we publish it, yeah. If we publish it, we'll hang on to the rights for a year. If, if we don't, the ladies will send back a letter saying either a rewrite, resubmit, or no thank you uh, as quick as possible. Uh, after a year, you get the rights back, but we will keep paying you as long as the anthology sells. Mm -hmm. Um. I, the only firm rule we have is it must be entertaining. All else is negotiable. And we ask for uh, uh, stories that are 5,000, 8,000 words. If you send us an entertaining story that's 12,000 words, we'll publish it. If you send us an entertaining story that's 3,500 words, we'll publish it. Well, if it fits, you know, if yeah. it fits the needs of the story, there you are. It, so. it, everything, send it. We can negotiate on uh, – if, if you have a story that fits – our theme, send it. Well, if it's a little over, a little under, or a little squirrely, we'll negotiate. As far as being able to buy the books, if you want to binge books, we're finding that there's a fantastic audience for short stories out there. Yeah. yeah. Which I knew existed, mm -hmm. and we're almost single handedly reviving the book, book magazines. Yeah. Um, but as anthologies, and 
we if you subscribe to the Substack, which is a free subscription, there are people that pay that have paid us because they like us. But you don't have to. You'll get all of the uh, new releases will come out through Substack, and you can get those in your email. And um, our print books we're moving to yeah, to digital yeah. using Ingram because it's better quality. Yep, yeah, and Baker and Taylor. But Don't for worry. eBooks, you can find us on Amazon. Yep, and uh, you find one racketeer press person a story, and they're all linked together because we um, we number them just like dog books back in the beginning. Yep, and numbered all of their yellow spines. Um, so it's you know one through twenty four as of today. Yeah. So how do we do that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's like coffee. Can we, can we coffee. Lots of coffee. Mask, coffee. <laughs> coffee. All right. Um, Magus. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Maggie three just came out today. Um, I, I was. It was originally we had planned for it to be launched on the fifteenth of March, and I was actually so relieved it came out early <laughs> because I, I uh, beware the Ides of March. Yeah, it's tomorrow. <laughs> March fifteenth. Yeah, I was kind of dreading that, and I just never voiced it. I never. I, I'm not superstitious, but. Yeah. I never said it aloud, and I just was so happy it dropped early. Yep. Yeah. Cats, they do what they want. So, you know. So, so individually, individually, where can every one of you be found? I know, um, Cedar, I've got all of yours for the show notes because you were very easy. You were a Google search away. But uh, for the rest <laughs> of you, you made it very easy for me, and I, I appreciate that. I've been doing this for a while, and uh, again, the Substack is the best place for people to, to subscribe. You'll get all my whimsy, but you'll also get all the uh, the book releases. Uh, my latest story would have been Farm Life earlier this week. Short story. Uh, that one's a Western romance, so way off the track of what your readers like. I mean, if you throw a space cowboy in there, you could make it speculative fiction. <laughs> Not that story, but the series before that was indeed very old school planetary romance. Nice. What about you, Rita? Um, I have a I have a short novella. Well, that's redundant as well as repetitive, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. I have a I have a novella on on Amazon called Mabel Markwood and oh, the overly familiar. <laughs> Nice. I've slept since then. I'm, I'm planning on. <laughs> I've got a follow up that I'm working on that I hope to publish on there by the end of the year. It's a mid century wise woman um, healer witch in East Texas, and, uh, yeah, and we 1950s. love her. And she, yeah, 1950s, set in 1951. She drives. She she does have a broom. She drives an old pickup truck, and <laughs> she has a weird um, kind of cultural clash with a new familiar who's from uh, from. London, and anyway, it's, it's such a lovely story. It's it's a lot of fun. I had fun. I'm having fun with her, and she's a fun character. And um, I'm picturing somebody, a character who was on the old Gunsmoke series, as okay. you know, she's somebody. She's a little potato of a lady, <laughs> and kind of like you know, kind of a mess, but 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 good. And um, she's uh, she's she's been fun to write, and also fun to write in that um, the whole the whole having the technology that they had in the fifties, but none of the wireless stuff we've got going on. So, so it's pretty, um, I, I didn't want to deal with the, um, the whole issue of, yeah. of digital technology. So we're analog, but, um, <laughs> but and they have a clash over, over how tea, how one takes tea. Yeah. But that but was a fun scene, but it's a hoot. It's kind of, a, it's, it's very, very country, very rural fantasy, but, um, but I've, I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, I have my blog. Other than that, um, you can find me under a bridge uh, <laughs> threatening goats. Um, I don't. As I, one I, does. I, I, as one does. Um, I'm not a. I, I'm not a people person. Um, I'm very, very. She's my. She's. You know, I, my blog. That's it. Uh, I've got a, a private Facebook, but. Uh, Law Dog has a Facebook page, but it's mostly just updates. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm one of the three moms. I'm the elder mom of the apocalypse, and we have our every Wednesday evening we have the three moms of the apocalypse broadcast, which is the only place you will find me. Um, otherwise, I'm here at the Blanket Fort, where we are currently sitting, um, practicing my maiden name, which was Goad, trying to get all these people to get their stuff done. So. <laughs> 
kind of my job. Um, Actually, she's the reason the whole bunch of folks are here. Yeah, yeah, because she was like, you should move here. And she found this space for me and a house to live in, which was great. So um, so I'm, I'm not, I mean, I do make costumes, but mm -mm, most people can't afford me. So, you know what? I bless the day that you, that you walked into my life. You're just one of the most incredible. She's one of the most phenomenal, phenomenal theatrical costume designers. You've got well, to look you. up her stuff. I'm retired now. So, but, but she did, she did some famous operas and ballets that probably some people have heard of. Yeah. And well, she's yeah. really a phenomenal, well, I don't do that. phenomenal so. crafts person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm also very good at getting people who are running around with their hair on fire to actually calm down and do their stuff. So you're like an ADHD person herder. Yeah. She's, so that's which is worse than herding cats. <laughs> so thank you. Thank yes. you. Having run anthologies myself, you have my sympathy because it's like it is like herding cats. Like, but please just give me your information. I want to be able to pay you. How hard is this? <laughs> oh my god. No, you're not. Oh, don't don't push that button. We have a young oh. gentleman. We have a young gentleman. We had a Where's Waldo. We did. So. Um, last Liberty Con, we went on uh, the Rider Dojo, and one of the things that I was stressing was, if you're a new author, mm. would you please check your author it's email on a regular email. basis? Oh, mm. because I'm the one who gets to deal with that. The, I get to send out the contracts, which is really fun because everyone's like, sweet, I got into an anthology because we really love new authors. We really love new authors a lot. So we had this one we were doing. I can't remember which one it was, but it was recent where this guy, I, I sent him a contract. Great story. Great story. Great story. Great story. Fabulous story. Contract. And I was Nothing. like, damn, we've never heard of this guy. Let's go get him. You know, so I sent him a contract and he gets back to me with the contract and then he disappears. And we have to like get pub share stuff and all these. He has to respond to more stuff. Yes, he has to like, stuff. And it was like two days before we had to have everything on pub share so we could publish the book. And I'd been sending email after email after email. And I'd been on the Writer Dojo group. And I'd been on Facebook. And I'd been in North Texas Troublemakers. And so I searched for him. Publisher I mean, privilege. I went, hey, does anybody know this? Right. This and first so, name, last name. So it was like, oh. And so it was, it was Monday. And I had to yank its story. Because we can't move forward without his approval. So, you know, like the next day, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, he's listening to Rider Dojo. Yeah, he. I get this email. I'm really sorry. I just, I, I should have looked at my email. Funny, I was listening to the Rider Dojo with you guys, and it was like, maybe, like, and, and he was talking about, I should check the email. He went, Oh, I should look at my email. Giant list from John. I'm going, Where the fuck are you? <laughs> You snooze, you lose. So, but it was a really good story. Unfortunately, because we do that, he got into the next one. But that man has never, ever missed an email from me again. He was like, so when is, you're going to move me to the next one? I went, yeah. And he said, so when is that? And I said, check your email. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my All God. Right. Yeah. Anyway. So this is the part, dear listener, where I remind <laughs> you to please be kind and speak your mind on the reviewing platforms. Your reviews help the right readers find the right books. And that is especially true when you're dealing with small press and indie uh, published authors because they don't have large budgets. So your reviews help sort of tweak the algorithm so people find them and to tell them what you like and don't like because authors like people reading their books. So if you don't like what they're writing, they kind of want to know that so they could try something else. So I would do your like, part I would like, I would like to add one ahead. thing. Just do it ahead. Don't interrupt me. No, I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. What do you want to add? Please don't review our books when you have a case of the ass in the post office. <laughs> I hate <laughs> reviews that say, uh, love this story, arrived at torn cover, one star. I can't. I, I... <laughs> yes. I you're reviewing the content, the not the quality of it office. arrival. But separate review category. But yes. all, right. all right, this is the part, dear listener, where I tell you where you can find us. Now that you know where you can find all the fine folks at this lovely independent press, you can find us on our link, <laughs> L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E, link tree slash Blasters and Blades podcast. Again, link tree slash Blasters and Blades podcast, where we link to all the things, the bit shoots, the rumbles, the Twitters, the YouTubes, email Blasters and Blades podcast at gmail.com. Again, Blasters and Blades podcast at gmail.com. We check that at least once a week, people, I promise. We have our Blasters and Blades Facebook group and Facebook page. And most importantly, we link to Madam Stabby Stab's Instagram, Twitter, and email, where you can send all your hateful comment and she will reply and make you cry. That should go on a t-shirt, Nick. Get that down on, uh, on paper. 
All right. And uh, we have our website at anchor.fm slash blasters dash and dash blades. Again, anchor.fm slash blasters dash and dash blades, where for as little as 99 cents a month, you can help keep the lights on. These episodes aren't free to produce, and we appreciate your patronage. And if you want to support the show more directly, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash author J.R. Hanley. Again, buymeacoffee.com slash author J.R. Hanley. Be sure to put in the comment section that it is for the podcast. Well, I almost stumbled over that one. We promise uh, we will keep our co-hosts duly caffeinated. They will drink until that coffee brand coffee food podcast runs pours out of their eyeballs. See what I did there, Nick? Doing an extra ad spot for you. There you go. And with that, thank you for spending some of your precious time with us. For my crazy co-host, I am J.R. Hanley, and this was the Blasters and Blades podcast. We'll be back next week at the same time where we'll indulge our love of nerd culture, cheesy jokes, and all things that go boom. Thank you, fine ladies and gentlemen, for coming on. Happy to be here. Thank you. All right. We're